Fire a blender and add a plane. Then, rotate the plane 90 degrees about the x-axis and attach a new material to it. This plane will be the canvas for our procedural texture. Set a name for the material, and then let's head over to the shading viewport. Here, we can immediately delete the default shader. Then, bring up the Add menu and use it to drop in Blender's Emission Shader. Connect the two nodes and set the emission color. This will be the base color for our procedural texture. Again, bring up the Add menu and use it this time to drop in a Texture Coordinate node, a Vector Math node, a Map Range node, and a Math node. Connect these set of nodes together and make sure to set the Math node to Power these nodes will draw a perfect circle at the center of the procedural texture. Keep in mind that the input values of the map range node determine the size of the circle, as well as the halo around it. Also, on the math node, make sure to set the exponent to a negative number. This will give us a completely dark circle surrounded by a bright halo. Now, to make the halo look like a ring of fire, let's add a noise texture node, a color ramp node, and two math nodes. After connecting the nodes, be careful to set the first math node to power, and set the second math node to multiply. This will add some noise to our procedural texture and turn the simple halo into a burning ring of fire. Now. To make the fire more aggressive, let's add another noise texture node and a mix RGB node. The combination of these two nodes takes the UV coordinates and distorts them. This will make the fire around the procedural texture look more sinister. Now, before we add a driver to animate the fire, let's quickly look at some of the parameters of our procedural texture. First. The inputs of the vector math node can be used to set the location of the circle. Second, the input values of the map range node can be used to set the size and diameter of the circle, as well as the width of the surrounding fire. And last but not least, the emission shader node can be used to change the color and feel of the final result. Now, to animate the procedural texture, let's add a value node and a vector math node. Set the vector math operation to multiply add. This takes the output of the value node and multiplies it by some factor. The result is then added to the UV coordinates to offset them before they are passed on to the subsequent nodes. To create a simple driver for the animation, in the input field of the value node, type in the pound symbol, followed by the word frame. This will give us the current frame number, which is then passed on to the vector math node. At this point, you can press spacebar on your keyboard to play the animation. Keep in mind that you can always change the speed or the direction of the animation using the multiplier values of the vector math node. To learn more about procedurally generated textures or visual effects in general, have a look at my other videos.